Senator Rand Paul moved this week to hold a non-controversial flood insurance bill hostage until the Senate agrees that life begins at fertilization. That's the first line in a Huffington Post article that I'm going to link below. Now, this bill is a bill to boost the National Flood Insurance Program, which is very important since hurricane season is about to start. But he's holding it up until he gets his way on this totally unrelated fetal personhood amendment, which would give legal protection to fetuses from the moment of fertilization. Now, I commented on this in my very first video, uh, which is called Some Comments on Abortion and a Modest Proposal. And uh, I, I would like to apologize for not listing any citations to some of the things I'm going to say. I have them. I don't know where they are. If I can find them by the time this uploads, I will add them. If not, I, can, I will basically just have to add them later. But this concept of life beginning at conception is not workable. Studies have shown that from 25% to 50% of fertilized eggs pass through a woman's system, usually without her ever knowing about it. Now here in the United States, that amounts to around 4 million a year. So if laws are passed that say life begins at conception, then that means that 4 million people a year are either flushed down the toilet or end up in a landfill on tampons or sanitary pads. So what's the government going to do about this? Um, are sexually active women going to have to save all products of menstruation just in case there might be a person there? And how would we define sexually active? I mean, we know people lie. So maybe we should just include this uh, to encompass all women past the age of puberty. And then what would, what would be done with such products? I mean, how should they be disposed of? I mean, these are people we're talking about, right? According to the law, these are people. And people deserve to be treated res with respect even after their debt. So are we going to have to have some sort of funeral or funerals? I mean, just in case there are people there. Um, I mean, perhaps there could be monthly services where the collected remains for a region could be buried or incarcerated. And of course, since there are different forms of religious observance in this country, including many varieties of Christianity, Maybe the different religions and churches would have to do their own collections and their own services. Now, this is ridiculous. I think you can see it. And it'd be very expensive. And who'd have to pay for it? The women? Because some men wrote a ridiculous law? The consequences of passing such a law are enormous, untenable, and offensive. Now, if you try to combine this with Arizona's new law, things really get out there. Now, Arizona's new law says that the age of a fetus is calculated from the first day of the last menstrual period. That's right. So when a woman's menstrual period ends, that's when the potential age of a fetus, or the age of a potential fetus, is calculated. Now this could be interpreted to mean that Fertilization could occur at any time. So, I mean, maybe women's toilets will have to be equipped with uh, some device that they can catch anything that might contain a fetus. I think we don't have to worry about defecation, just urination. And, of course, we've now moved into a world of fractured fantasy, uh, a ludicrous scenario of political repression. But don't think it could happen. These people are so intent on getting what is essentially a religious belief into law that they aren't thinking of the consequences of fetal personhood. And no one really knows 
when life begins or how you define life so that you can say it begins as an independent entity. Furthermore, for those who believe in a soul, no one knows when the soul enters the body. There are no references in any religious work that I know of. I, of course, don't know of all of them that define exactly when a soul enters the body. In the Christian churches, defining a life at conception is fairly new. For many years it was defined as being the point of quickening, which is when the child starts to move inside. Now there are some other bills out there that also want to define um, when life is there, at least for terms of abortion, from the point of when you can detect a heartbeat, a fetal heartbeat. And that would be essentially saying that life begins when you can detect a heartbeat. There are problems with that legislation, too, because we stopped defining life by whether or not there's a heartbeat a long time ago. We now go by brain death. So if you're going to start defining life by whether or not there's a heartbeat, What's that going to do to everybody's living wills? Because when someone is unplugged, their heart's still beating. Their brain is dead, but their heart's still beating. All of these laws are designed to stop abortion. Now, I don't like abortion. I've mentioned that before. Um, but I'm certainly not going to tell anyone what they should do. When life begins is not certain. When a soul is placed in the body is also not certain, but should also not be something that a political entity, a non-religious political entity, should be taking into consideration. We have to go by facts, and there really aren't any at least not definitive. Everybody can define life whenever they want. So we have to leave these decisions of whether or not to have an abortion up to the individual. And we have to respect their decisions. I think the more important thing will be try to create an environment where abortion is unnecessary. Promoting birth control. Um, giving kids the information about their own bodies. And I'm not just talking about the mechanics, I'm also talking about the psychology that, that goes into it, letting them understand that, yeah, these hormones are going to start rushing through your system, and you're going to go a little crazy, and you need to understand what that means and how to approach it. And anyway, um, as I said, I will try to find the appropriate citations here, if not later. But this is getting very scary out there. The laws they're passing uh, make no sense. They have a host of ridiculous unintended consequences or potential consequences. And I think we're going to find them clashing and combining in various ways, such as with the Arizona law, to make this a very Looney Tunes world. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and listening. Goodbye.